Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all Denarians on the go and in the know, wherever you may be. It is November 10, 2019. Know that today, we are one day closer to our goal than yesterday, and we all cross the finish line together. First article of interest Parliamentary finance. The budget deficit 2020 will exceed 80 trillion dinars. 10th November, 2019. The Parliamentary Finance Committee, on Sunday, that the budget deficit 2020 will exceed 80 trillion dinars, where the government will rely on filling this deficit through internal borrowing in addition to withdrawing funds from the central bank. Committee member Naji Idris said in a statement to the information that the increase in the job grades will increase the size of the budget deficit, especially since the recently launched grades do not have any financial allocation in the budget. Idris said, the government will resort to internal borrowing or fill the deficit in the financing way through an open withdrawal from the central bank, where the deficit will exceed 80 trillion dinars, which represents a disaster in the Iraqi economy. He explained that the economic catastrophe experienced by Iraq as a result of the failed economic policy of the country since 2003 and to this day, especially as there is an expansion of government spending with the reduction of investment spending, especially as there is a lack of operation of factories and factories, and most investment amounts go to foreign companies operating in oil projects and electricity debt. Next article of interest. World Council. Five countries have more than half the world's gold reserves. 10th November 2019 Economy News Baghdad The World Gold Council announced on Sunday that five countries have more than half of the world's gold reserves, indicating that Iraq has maintained its fifth position in the Arab world. The United States, Germany, Italy, France and Russia have more than half of the world's gold reserves, the council said in a survey published on its website in November. These countries have 18,627 tons of 34,000 tons listed, he said. In the International Financial Statistics of Global Gold Reserves. He added that the United States of America ranked first in these reserves by 8.133 thousand tons, followed by Germany in 3.366 thousand tons, followed by Italy in 2.451 thousand tons followed by France in 2.436 thousand tons and then Russia in 2.241 thousand tons. The council pointed out that Iraq maintained its fifth position in the Arab world, followed by Saudi Arabia, Lebanon, Algeria and Libya, where these reserves amounted to 96.3 tons, which represents 6.8% of the rest of its currencies. The UK-based World Gold Council, WGC, has extensive experience and knowledge of the factors driving the market change and its members are among the world's largest and most advanced gold mining companies. Next article of interest. A meeting of the four presidencies and the issuance of a joint statement on the current situation. November 10, 2019 14-29 Baghdad, President of the Republic Barim Saleh hosted a meeting held at the Peace Palace in Baghdad on Sunday and attended by Prime Minister Adel Abdul Mahdi, Speaker of the House of Representatives Mohammad Halbousi and President of the Supreme Judicial Council, Fake Zaydan. According to a presidential statement received by the Euphrates News, a copy of it, were discussed at the meeting various political and security developments in the country in the midst of large demonstrations in Baghdad and other provinces where the meeting stressed that these peaceful popular protests is a legitimate reform movement is a must and that, in response to national public opinion and to the demands of political and service life, which spare Iraqis deserve after decades of tyranny, war, violence and corruption. He pointed out that, the popular protest by the youth of Iraq aspiring to a free and dignified life with a peaceful national will that respects the legal and constitutional contexts and appreciates and safeguards the interests of the country is a great protest in the course of rebuilding the state and purifying its institutions and upgrading its construction to what Iraq deserves. The meeting affirmed, the firm stands to abstain and reject any security solution to the peaceful demonstration and to severely hold accountable any confrontation that adopts excessive violence, 
pointing in this regard to the orders and directives of the Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces to prevent the use of live bullets in all forms of violence that depend on cruelty and exaggeration. The statement added that, the meeting dealt with keen interest cases of abductions against activists by uncontrolled and outlaw groups, as well as crimes of assault on demonstrators, which are directed to investigate and identify the perpetrators and punish them, stressing that no one detainee will remain of the demonstrators. In addition, the meeting stressed, the necessity of adhering to the peaceful and democratic nature of the demonstrations in a manner that preserves public security and property and prevents the diversion of the demonstrations from their peaceful nature. The meeting also stressed, what is most important, respect and sacrifice of the sacrifices, of the martyrs and the wounded of the protagonists of peaceful demonstrations and of our security forces whose blood shed the road and opened the horizon towards the future. It is the responsibility of the governmental and legal authorities, our responsibility, collectively and governed, not to stop the tireless efforts to arrest the killers, the killers and the bloodshed. Treatment of the wounded's trade capabilities available. He noted that, with pride and affirmation of the meeting and say to the Iraqi youth, you can not only win, and your country and your people when you, we win you as we embark on a vigorous action in order for your protest to be a vital occasion to initiate radical reform work must be successful in practical results that will combat corruption as the scourge of the greatest devastation after terrorism and violence. It has also been necessary to evaluate the tracks of the political process at various legislative and executive levels so as to provide authorities and institutions that are truly capable of serving the people, advancing and advancing the country. It is a state where the people aspire and dream, and the responsibility of the elected rulers to serve the people and to ensure the fulfillment of their aspirations, and to make precious and precious for that. The meeting emphasized the following. 1. The executive and judicial authorities have already begun the legal work in initiating the opening of the investigative files on corruption and prosecuting the accused in order to achieve justice and restore looted rights. These files will continue to open. No one, whatever his position, position and position, can escape justice. There is no politicization or favoritism in the opening of files and in investigations and trials. The interest of the country and the rights of the people and the application of the law is the decisive in everything, as was the legal action was taken by the judiciary against those who caused the death and injury of a number of demonstrators and security forces and those who attacked public property where arrest of some of them and arrest warrants have been issued against another section and the investigation is ongoing. 2. Work has also been initiated to legislate a new electoral law to ensure that this law guarantees justice in electoral competition, helps the arrival of qualified candidates under the voters' vision and convictions, and reduces the chances of partisan monopoly that keep political stagnation between a limited number. The new law also helps to enhance young people's chances of reaching parliament and contributing to their country's policymaking. The new law will result in the achievement of a truly independent, professional and efficient HEC in all its joints and cadres. 3. The demonstrations helped and assist in the legitimate pressure on the political forces and parties, the government, the legislative, executive and judicial authorities to accept the correction of the tracks and accept the positive changes, especially in the areas of ministerial reshuffle on the basis of efficiency and reduce the harmful effects of quotas in all its forms and correct the paths of the state to put it in the right context. Naturally as a servant and a state sponsor of the people and protects its interests and not the interests of parties and governing persons and powers holding power. In their view, the demonstrations in their pure and peaceful form are among the most important means of monitoring and pressure to achieve this and to secure the required reforms and achieve the desired goals. 4. We have already started the preparation for the National Dialogue to review the system of government and the Constitution in accordance with the constitutional and legal contexts. The meeting reaffirms its appreciation and respect for the determination of young people, most of whom were at the height of their aspiration for life and their pride in the movement they have shaken the country from end to end and presented the great image of this jealous people, 
the most important movement between what was achieved after 2003, which led to a comprehensive review not only of the structures of institutions but also policies and plans for building and development and changing laws to put the country and the people at the heart of the contemporary life of the finest countries. It is a movement that has renewed the will to change for greater reforms that can be achieved with such determination and leap. Free peaceful protesters have managed to keep their movement peaceful. Their national will was greater than the intentions of the malice who sought to distort the peaceful nature of the national protest movement, and who wanted this evil and evil country to slip into what God has preserved. Also it honored the meeting certainly on the high role played by the supreme reference which upheld the right to object and protest, and advises reform and confirm it, and alert the need to take into account the security and peace of Iraq in these severe regional circumstances sensitivity. To make life together. For enhanced victories Iraqis, fields the war against terrorism, from protest yards, to work in construction sites. Next article of interest. National Union Leader, Protests in Iraq Do Not Pose a Threat to the Kurdistan Region 10th November, 2019 Kurdistan The leader of the Patriotic Union of Kurdistan Mullah Bakshir said on Saturday that the protests in the capital Baghdad and a number of other Iraqi provinces do not pose a threat to the Kurdistan region. Mullah Bakshir explained in a discussion session in Suleymaniya this evening that the outbreak of the demonstrations led to widespread financial corruption among the parties and the ruling class, saying that about $368 billion was stolen from Iraq and deposited with banks in Britain and some report that thefts amount to $600 billion, which led to an outbreak poverty in wanton Iraq. He added that the current generation of social networking sites suffers from hunger and material need, and 40% of it is unemployed, which prompted him to protest against the federal government. Mullah Bakshir said that the protests in Iraq do not pose fears and danger to the budget of the Kurdistan region and the budgets or to Article 140, which also does not oppose the existing federal system. Next article of interest. Sources disclose the results of meetings held by Iraqi political forces within two weeks. 10th November, 2019 Baghdad All the political forces of the three main components of Iraq, namely the Shiites, Kurds and Sunnis, met throughout the crisis of protests that swept Baghdad and a number of predominantly Shiite provinces. The political forces continued their meetings to get out of the current crisis of demonstrations which is the largest in the history of Iraq. Sources familiar with the results of the meetings said that the Shiite forces put forward several proposals, but were rejected by the Sunni and Kurdish forces. The transition to the presidential system has been rejected, and the transition to the mixed system has also been rejected because the president-elect will cost the biggest bloc candidate, dissolve parliament and go to early elections, the sources said. The sources said that the forces agreed to have a package of reforms that satisfy the angry street, which includes the following. 1. Amending the election law and going towards a fair electoral threshold that would allow independent candidates to win. 2. Amending the party's law and activating two aspects, the first is where you get this or the party's finances, and the second is to prevent the parties from forming military wings. Three. Amending some articles of the Constitution to suit the demands of the masses, provided that the democracy of the system or the federal situation is not compromised. 4. Transition to the election of governors directly by the people. 5. Converting the decisions that have been voted on in the House of Representatives into laws, which included the abolition of privileges and the like of previously published materials. Next article of interest. al the blocs, the government, the United Nations and the demonstrators have agreed to resolve the crisis. 2258, 9th November 2019. Representatives of the Building Alliance Amr al Fayez, Saturday, that the representatives of the blocs and the government and the United Nations and the demonstrators agreed today on a roadmap to resolve the crisis, pointing out that those who demand the dismissal of the government wants to drop it in any way in order to settle accounts. 
Al-Fayez said in a televised statement continued, Information, that, political solutions are beginning to take its course and everyone is afraid to go unknown if the government was dismissed. He added that, those who demand the dismissal of the government wants to bring it down in any way in order to settle accounts and everyone is convinced that the survival of the government is the least loss. He said that, representatives of the blocs and the government and the United Nations and the demonstrators agreed today on a roadmap to resolve the crisis, where it was agreed to give the government a chance of not less than six months and not more than a year to implement reforms. He stressed that, it was agreed to postpone the hosting of Abdul Mahdi in Parliament, noting that, the fall of the government demand of some demonstrators, but not all, and these demands are politically motivated. Next article of interest. Protesters shut down radio after, insulting, protesters. 10th November, 2019 Baghdad News, a source in the province of Dawania, on Sunday. Protesters shut down the government radio Dawania. The source told Twilight News that demonstrators were able to force workers in the radio station Dawania of the local government to stop its programs, after broadcast programs that said that the sponsors abused the demonstrations. The students of the University of Mathana organized a demonstration inside the university and expressed readiness to go to the central demonstration square in downtown Samoa. Students in a number of schools and colleges in Mason Province continued their strike and joined the demonstrators. Next article of interest. The Presidency of Parliament stresses the prohibition of any exceptions in the amendment of the pension law. 10 November 2019-1455. The Presidency of the House of Representatives, to prevent any exceptions in the amendment of the Unified Retirement Law. The first Deputy Speaker of the House of Representatives, Hassan Karim al kabi on Sunday, a joint meeting of the Parliamentary Committees of Finance and Legal to discuss the draft Unified Retirement Law. A statement from his office received a copy of the Euphrates News that the amendment will be approved for the first time away from exceptions. He stressed, the desired reform will not be achieved on the ground unless it passes the House of Representatives in the form of legal legislation to meet the aspirations of the masses. Kabi stressed during the meeting, the need to pass this law as the first real law goes towards the package of reforms demanded by the Iraqis, an opportunity for the House of Representatives to reflect his keenness to meet these demands. He called on the members of the two committees to intensify their meetings over the next few days in order to mature the provisions of this law and submit it to the final vote within days, stressing the importance of the law to be fair to all segments and does not include exceptions to ensure the unification of the dues of all Iraqis, and does not affect the human rights of all groups. More articles of interest to come. Don't forget to hit that like and the subscribe button and check out the new CEP. Currency Exchange Planner, a must-have for both pre- and post-RV exchange planning, the link is in the description panel below. Be sure to tell them that the Denarian sent you so you get the extra pre-negotiated discount as my subscriber. I encourage you, knowledge is power, stay informed and stay alert. Over and out for now, the Denarian.